In our previous video, we've set up a construction for our program where we have a driver UI class, a vehicle superclass, and then a Neon Cavalier and Prius subclass, or subclasses. Now, the Cavalier and the Prius have some attributes that are unique. In other words, no other class has convertible, aside from Cavalier. No other class has miles per milliamp hour or milliamp hour other than Prius. At this point, our driver class can create a Neon Cavalier or a Prius, but it's unable to set these values that are specific to Cavalier or specific to Prius. So in this video, we're going to see how we can set those values using casting an instance of. Now, casting an instance of are generally considered bad practice in Java. There are other ways to do it, ways we haven't explored yet by using uh, things like a, a true abstract factory pattern, using the command pattern, and other things like that. But nonetheless, uh, while it's not considered good practice, sometimes you have to do it, sometimes there aren't many other options. Or what's even more common is you're working in a group environment, and one of your colleagues might be using this, and even though it's not good practice, it's good to know what it is when you come across it. So I'm going to go to our program, and I'm going to expand on driver. And uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to invoke this set convertible, set convertible method. But the problem is that's only available if the object that's in this my vehicle variable is a Cavalier. And the truth is the object can be a Neon, a Cavalier, or a Prius. So how do we find out if it's a Cavalier? Well, we can use this instance of comparison operator. And I'm going to use an if test, as we usually do when we're talking about comparison operators. I'm going to say if my vehicle, vehicle, instance of, very careful there, instance of is all one word, lowercase. It's the only comparison operator in Java that's a word and not a symbol. You tend to think of comparison operators like double equal or less than or greater than. This is a legitimate comparison operator. It happens to be a word. So if my vehicle instance of Cavalier, then we're going to say my vehicle dot set convertible true. Seems easy enough, right? A little alt shift F to get our tabs lined up. The only trick is inside the SIF test, it still doesn't realize that my vehicle is actually Cavalier and not a more generic vehicle type. So we have to cast it. We have to tell it, this is a Cavalier. So to cast, I wrap the entire variable in parentheses. Then within those parentheses, I'm going to say Cavalier. And that's what we would call an inline cast. And you see now the set convertible method uh, is, the set convertible method is legal. Now probably what I should do is I should prompt here and I should do a J option pane show input dialog and say, or let's say J option pane show confirm dialog and say um, null comma is this a convertible? Okay. And I'll borrow a little syntax from down below in the program where we have a show confirm dialog with no, a question, a title, what buttons do we want to show, and what icon do we want to show? So I'll go back up. Okay, so we have null, a question, a title. Okay, uh, what buttons do we want to show? J option pane, that yes, no option. And then uh, what, uh, what icon do we want to show? J option pane. Show, uh, sorry, J option pane dot question message. And terminate with the semicolon. Okay. Now, because the user is clicking a yes or a no, we're going to shift alt v and assign this to a variable, and that variable is going to be convertible. Okay. And we're going to say uh, if convertible equal equal j option pane dot yes option, meaning that the yes button was chosen, and we're going to say yes, it is a convertible. Uh, otherwise, we'll say no, it's not a convertible. There are other ways we could do this. This is one way. Okay. Now that was a lot of typing, wasn't it? Uh, the vehicle instance of Cavalier. We also want to do some prompts for Prius. We would need to get milliamp hours and miles per milliamp hour for Prius. So we're going to have a chance to do this all over again, but we're going to do it with a bit less typing. First of all, let me just put some comments up here that say, ask 
Cavalier specific questions. Okay, now I'm going to say ask Prius specific questions. Okay, so I'm going to say if, well, uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do, we're going to do a shortcut, I-N-S-T, and then tab. Take a look at what happened there. Rewind that if you want. But do you see I, I typed in I-N-S-T and, and hit tab, and it created a construction very similar to the one I created up here on line 56. Okay, it has a space here where it's asking me for a variable type, and I'm going to call that my vehicle, or not a variable type, but literally a variable itself. We'll say my vehicle instance of Prius. Now look at that. Do you see how that is? As I start typing, it fills in the blanks below, Prius. So it keeps them all synchronized together. And then it casts it on line number 68. That saves a lot of typing over doing it the manual way. And this is something that you don't use every day. So it pays to have a little shortcut that you can remember. So now what we're going to do, J option pane, dot show input dialog. Okay, and we're going to say, Enter milliamp hours, okay, and then we're going to uh, shift alt v assign that to a variable. We'll call that str mah milliamp hours, okay, and then we'll say uh, milliamp hours. I think we did as an int, or did we? Let's see. Both of them are ints. Okay, that's good. So I'll say uh, int, and then we'll say int mah equals integer dot parse int. Integer.parseIn converts from a string to an int. STRMAH. Terminate with a semicolon. And then Prius.set milliamp hours. And then int MAH. Let's repeat this again, but this time we're going to say J option pane. Oh, that's right. You know what? We made a shortcut for that, didn't we? J option pane, show input, show input dialog. Enter miles per milliamp hour. Okay. And then we will uh, shift alt V. And assign that to STRMPMAH. Kind of a long acronym, isn't it? Okay. And then again, integer dot parse int. And I'm going to say STRMPMAH. Uh, okay. Terminate with a semicolon. And we'll say int MP int MPMAH equals. Wow, that's. That's a lot of letters, isn't it? But nonetheless, we are getting the miles per milliamp hour. And now finally, Prius dot set milliamp, uh, miles per milliamp hour, int MPMAH. So you see, now we have a section where we can ask questions of Cavalier and another section where we can ask questions of Prius and we can populate those, uh, we can populate those methods, populate those attributes once we have selected a Cavalier or a Prius. Now, why don't we have an instance of for Neon? Well, because Neon's a very basic car, and there are no attributes that we need to set that are specific to Neon. So thinking of your programming assignment, Neon's going to be like a savings account. Uh, Cavalier's going to be like a checking account, which is a savings account, but with some additional attributes, like a check number. And then Prius is going to be, I'm sorry, uh, Cavalier is actually going to be more like a certificate of deposit because you have a length to maturity. Prius is going to be more like a checking account because you might have a couple of things you need to set, a check number, but also you might need to take a monthly fee out of that interest calculation that you get. Okay, let's run the program. I'm just going to go ahead and run it without debugging. Let's run the program and let's verify that we get the correct prompts for the correct car. So I right click and I choose run. First, let's just go with a neon, gallons of gas, so say 10, miles per gallon 10, odometer 10,000. Yes, let's create another vehicle. Did you notice none of the Cavalier-specific methods appeared there? None of the uh, Prius-specific prompts appeared either. So let's go to Cavalier. Is this a convertible? Now take a look at that. This is a, a Cavalier-specific prompt. We'll go ahead and choose yes. After that, we get the prompts that are the same for all of our vehicles. Do you want to create another vehicle? Yes. Let's go ahead and choose Prius. Uh, now take a look. These are the Prius specific methods. So milliamp hours 10, miles per milliamp hour, maybe 10, hell, I don't know. Uh, gallons of gas, we'll say 20. 
miles per gallon 20, odometer 20,000. No need to create another vehicle, we've created one of each. Distance to travel 100 miles, reimbursement rate 44 cents per mile. No need to create another trip. And what we should see here in our output is that we'll get output for three different cars. Uh, we get our before and after. For the neon, we get before and after for the Cavalier, and then we get a before and after for a Prius, and we know that the Prius is the only one that prints out this message in Prius, running in internal combustion mode, so we know all of that works just as we uh, suspected it would. So, uh, this video was a look at the instance of and the casting method. Uh, we know that these are things that are generally bad practice, and by the way, how could we refactor this? One option might be to take this Cavalier-specific logic and put it in the Cavalier class, take the Prius-specific logic, put it in the Prius class, and then invoke that uh, with kind of a generically named method. Uh, that would essentially be something called the command pattern that we'll look at later. But for simplicity, we'll keep it here now. Also, this is a good discovery of instance of and casting. So we know those aren't necessarily good practice, uh, so it's something if we're doing it, we want to think if there's a better way to do it, a different way to do it. Uh, we also know it's a very tricky syntax, so it helps to know some shortcuts. In NetBeans, INST was the shortcut. In Eclipse, if you're an Eclipse user, it's instance of and then, and then tab, and that will do a very similar operation. I'm not sure what it is in IntelliJ, but probably something very similar. Feel free to add it to the comments if you do know. In our next uh, video, we're going to take a look at uh, method overwriting. We're going to take a look at some kind of nuances of method overwriting. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.